Today on an all-new Dr. Phil, she hates her mom. You told your mother, I want you to die in a car accident. But they need her money. I can't afford to be on my own. Then you ought to get the chip off your shoulder. Mom's not working. I have, I guess you could say, a side business. So how's she making cash? Selling narcotics. I was. You still are. I am compelled by law to report that. Report away, I don't care. Plus... It's a face-off with in-laws that are on the outs. You are an abusive man, so of course you've got to have your mama and your daddy right next to you. You said including Jason's parents on the show is like giving a child molester support. That's how I feel. What in the world is that about? Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. I hate to see people suffering, and you've heard long enough. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Listen. I'm going to get you the help that you need. In five, four, This is going to be a changing day in your life. Go, Dr. Phil. Yesterday, we met Sarah, who says for the past decade, she's been in a tug-of-war with her pastor husband and her controlling parents. Now, her parents say Jason is abusive, and Sarah needs to leave him and come home. Jason says he may not be perfect, but his in-laws are impossible. Here's what happened yesterday. My parents hate Jason. My parents are controlling. It's their way or the highway. I'm a pastor and I have my own church. I feel like I need to protect Sarah from her mom and dad. It's been a heartache from the moment he's come into our life. Sarah who wasn't given to him. He took her. Jason is very controlling. He bullies her and it's not right. No woman should ever be afraid in her own home. You want this marriage shut down. We don't want our daughter to live in an abusive, controlling, manipulative relationship. So you don't necessarily want her to get her divorce? No, we have tried not to put our nose in their marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Laugh all you want. Yeah. I believe a wife who is the weaker vessel leaning on her husband, who's supposed to be stronger, that's just the way God made us. I've been taught that I need to submit. Submitting means hubby is always right. I am tired of being controlled. You're a pastor, right? Yes. So are you a Bible scholar? I believe the Bible says that husbands are to love their wives as Christ loved the church, and the Bible says that wives are to be submissive to their husbands. You love your wife as Christ loved the church. Right. I don't think Christ was verbally abusive I with agree. the church. I, I don't think Christ stalked around and slammed into the walls right. and taunted his yes, wife with control. That's not loving your wife as right. Christ loved the church. And the submission followed from the love. Why I act that way, I don't know, Dr. Phil. But, but, I know but, that but I let's should. not wrap that up in the scripture and talk about it as <laughs> though it's some kind of ordained role of the right. man in the family, because it certainly is not. Sure. And I'll debate that with you as long as you want to do it. No, I won't debate that. Do you call your mother and complain about your husband? Yes, I have. And I know that that's where part of the issue is, is because I have complained to my mom. I feel... Because doesn't that kind of give her one side of things? She already hated him to begin with, so of course she's not going to like That's him any better. That's not true. No, it is true. No, I don't hate anyone, no. Sarah. Okay, hate is here. Mom's feelings are like right there. <laughs> well, for one thing, you don't know my feelings. Um, you've made them evident. No. Yeah. You mean you well, did wear a black dress to her wedding? I was trying to make a statement without saying a word. Oh, come on. I don't care. No. Come on. You I wore a know. black dress to your daughter's Absolutely, wedding? Absolutely, because if you should have seen how the thing married. come about, you would have wore the black dress as well. I absolutely, you know what? Did you tell her that he was cheating on her? Oh, absolutely not. No. Yeah. Yes, you did. Really? Yes, yeah. she and did. She said, no, my that's husband fine. would never do that. I trust him. She said to her daughter, that's your first problem, trusting any man. That night, Dr. True. Phil, she, my wife overheard her tell her husband, we have to do whatever it takes to get her out of this relationship. Yes. It isn't just Jason that Lauren Bill can't stand. It's also his parents. 
Sarah's parents have never been willing to accept Jason. No matter what Jason does, it's not going to be good enough for Laura and Bill. Sarah is a good mom, good wife to Jason. Her parents have verbally abused her on the phone and left her in tears. It's real evident that her parents don't respect her. They treat her in a fashion that nobody deserves to be treated. Laura is very manipulative. I think that Sarah probably tells them things that go on between her and Jason. Her father had threatened Jason. Honestly can't say that I was shocked. There's just been such a dislike for Jason since the get-go. When you have problems, you need to work them out between you. Do not take your problems to either parent because parents don't forget and then they hold grudges. I would like to see Laura and Bill step back. Sarah has to make a choice. Is she going to choose Jason? I would say yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you guys for being here. So you two have not seen each other for eight years? Since the wedding. Since the wedding. And you two have no use for them. You don't care for them? Not a whole lot. But I feel that what you've done is absolutely yeah. way overstepped your bounds. <laughs> They're, they're wicked, but she doesn't okay. have a problem with it. No. Um, well, I don't, I don't here's think what you said no, to us. No, that's not what I said. And don't you, put words you in just my said mouth. That you just wicked. said it on the film right. piece. Right, but I said but I don't. you don't have a problem with but it. But I said, no. that's not what I said. I said, I don't hate anyone. Well, here's what you said to us. This is a quote. I wrote this down. You said, including Jason's parents in the show, is like giving a child molester support. Yeah. That's how I feel. What in the world is that about? What I said to my husband in private was, you're an abuser, and of course, now look at here, you got two against four. Right. This is the way it's always been. And the thing of it is, you can't even look me in the eye. Yeah. Because you're sending because, glares. I sure hope uh, that they're getting it you on, the, on are these cameras. An abusive man. No. no. Don't say no. Jason, no. we've seen it with our <laughs> own eyes. And I, I said that you are an abusive man. So, of course, you've got to have your mama and your daddy right next to you. I didn't There's invite two. them. I did. No, I, we, I said to the producer, they said you didn't want him here. I said, this is my show, not yours. Okay. I personally asked, thank you for being here. Yeah. I, I wanted you here. Thank you for being here. Um, I think her parents, well. her parents are here. His parents were entitled to be here. I asked them here. I wanted them here. And I thank you for coming. Yeah. D Doug, what did you want to say? Uh, well, she, she's made these comments, you know, that that uh, Jason's a wolf in sheep's clothing, and she's made these, uh, you know, suggestions that he's, I, I keep hearing about all this abusive stuff, and, and I have been with Jason and Sarah on dozens of occasions, and I've never, in, in any of the situations that I've been, I've never heard Sarah or Jason arguing with one another. Not anything out of the ordinary from something that's going on in the kitchen about who wants what to eat, but I've, I've never heard anything like that. All this started with, the wedding that they weren't happy about and it was you know their daughter and our son they're the ones that pushed for this we didn't push for this we said you have the wedding that you want and if they're not willing to do that then we're willing to do it and that's no, correct matter of fact you guys planned it uh they, in, i planned in, it in a three-way planned it three, plan you and your mom no no I, you three, my mom didn't plan you three it. Yes, in a three-way no, conversation how would you know you were not involved dr. in the Phil, least bit he well, said did, dr Phil, he said that me and my dr. wife dr. never got married he said me and my mom because you didn't want to be involved it's kind of weird. Right. Your name 200 and your people mom. saw and your, me and my your, wife your, kiss at the altar, your mom's not me and my mother kiss at the altar. Yeah. Mom's name? No, you just heard it out and, of your own mouth. And it was okay, it, you know, Melody, Bride, uh, Melody, what would you like to say? <laughs> <laughs> when a bride, a bride always gets married in her own time. Okay. Melody, what did you want to say? They, when they decide to get married, I looked at it, they are adults. They have a right to choose to get married. And I was going to make sure if they went on to have this wedding, I was going to help them have a beautiful wedding. I'm not going to let my son and future daughter-in-law sit back and not have a nice wedding because their parents didn't want to participate. That's not true. That's no, that is true. That is I sent emails not, and that letters. That is not true yes, at all. True. And by the way, Melody, 
you have way overstepped your bounds. It was not no. your place. No. Thank it you, was, Mom, for helping yeah. me yeah. with my wedding. It was Seriously. Not well yeah. Thank you. The last I remember, it ought to be the privilege of the parents of the bride. You, you didn't want anything to do with it. Sarah went ahead and <laughs> ran away. <laughs> she didn't run away. Yes, I yeah, was no, you did. Out, didn't. You and I didn't Take steal her either. Yes, yes you, you did. did. She was not given to you, Jason. You given. She wasn't given to you. Well, let's you took let's, her. let's take a break while we work out the travel circumstance. Coming up, Laura says Jason is not only abusive with Sarah, but also with her grandchildren, and she is worried about their safety. We'll talk about that next. Jason's not only abusive to Sarah, but also to his kids. We do spank our children, and we spank to discipline. I don't know where you come from, but where I come from, I believe that's called abuse. Tomorrow on an all-new doc. When Sarah graduated from college, Sarah was holding the diploma, and her mom came over to her, and she says, thank you, that is mine. She goes, I deserve this. I put you through college. I'm sorry, but no parent deserves somebody else's diploma when they're the ones that went to the college and did all the work. It belongs to Sarah, not her mother. For example, well, for the last eight years, Laura says she's been in mourning uh, over her daughter Sarah's marriage to her pastor husband, Jason, because she says Jason stole her daughter from her family. Jason and his parents, Doug and Melody, say it's Laura and her husband, Bill, that are the problem here. They say Laura and Bill have stepped over the line Absolutely. and even pitted Jason and Sarah's kids against them. Jason and I have argued in front of the kids. An argument may even begin in front of the kids. We have a seven-year-old, a five-year-old, and a two-year-old who aren't stupid, and they recognize when mommy and daddy are at odds with one another. Sarah's parents will manipulate the kids. They'll be on the phone, and my kids will say things to me like, Daddy, why don't you want us to move our family to be near me? me? That's not something my seven-year-old son would say. We do spank our children. I think that spanking could be abusive, and we're very cautious of that. And we spank to discipline. I don't know where you come from, but where I come from, I believe that's called abuse. Are, are your children being abused in this home? No, sir, they are not being abused. Uh, would you sit still for them being abused? No, absolutely not. Because you're not much mother if you allow your children to be no, abused. No, I would never allow uh, my children to be abused. Are you abusing your children in no, any way? No, absolutely. She allows herself to be abused, so. No, I don't. Do you I do two not. spank your children? Yes. Yes, we do spank our children uh -huh. in discipline only. Uh huh. And, uh, and by the way, I'm, I'm not a big fan of spanking. Uh, the country is divided about 50 50 on that. Let's get down to what we're going to do here in this situation. Okay. Um, you don't like her talking to her parents because they try to poison her in your mind about your marriage. No, I want her having a relationship with her parents. Yeah. But I don't want to deal with the fact that she always comes back with me or the reality is they're abusive to her on the phone. I yes. mean, they have yelled and screamed at her on the phone time and time and time again. And she cries in my shoulder. She's cried in my parents' shoulder. I, cried on Dad's I mean, shoulder. it is absolutely unbelievable. Dad's it is here. ridiculous. I mean, ridiculous. Do you feel abused by your parents? Yes, I do. I do feel abused. I have felt abused on both sides. Uh -huh. And I contacted you because I wanted some peace to be brought to this situation. I wanted peace to be brought between my parents and Jason. I wanted peace brought between my parents and myself, between Jason and myself, and between all of us as a whole. My dream for this situation would be that one day I could invite every side for a holiday or for a birthday party or for a graduation. And at this point, I can't do it without getting some form of grief. The wound, the cut has been so deep. Likewise. And yeah, yeah. Um, the cut has been so deep, we would need time to heal. Dr. Phil, can I, can I, uh, we want to have the relationship. I wouldn't have a problem if we spent Thanksgiving or Christmas, all that together, but my wife and I have stayed away from, from Jason and Sarah's and spending some special times with 
our grandchildren so that they could be there knowing how much they dislike us. We don't want to have that conflict. So we take separate times and take separate vacations so that we can spend that time. We, we want our grandchildren to enjoy both sides. I don't have a problem with that. I love my daughter-in-law. We have great times together. I think, I, I believe that that feeling is mutual. The same thing with our, my wife. And, and that's what we want. We want them to have a happy home, Jason and Sarah and the kids. And we wish that they would get along with everyone. If you really earnestly felt that, and if you earnestly uh, cared about Bill and I's feelings, why then didn't you, right at the very beginning, we come right out and ask you, could you please wait? We're, we are not prepared for this. And she asked me the question, so can I respond to the yeah, question? Yeah, because you know why? You have, you had just totally... Uh, you even went ahead and done our officiating of our daughter's wedding. Okay, I'm, and I'm gonna... you wanted to go ahead and omit if there's anybody here now that is against us, then forever hold your peace. You did not even put that in. My Sarah wasn't given. She was okay, I'm, taken. I'm, gonna, I'm sorry, I'm going to just have to, um, I'm, I'm going to have to interrupt you here. Sure. Can Laura and Bill find a way to accept Jason into their lives so this family can start to heal? Well, we're going to find out. My mom drinks every day, all day. Do you drive impaired with the children in the car? Now, don't put your head down. Stay with me here. My life right now is working okay. You're paying a guy to choke you to death in the woods. That's not working. She's posting that you killed your own baby. Watch your mouth, okay? Hey, hey. don't talk to me like that. Excuse me? Plus, like father. We caught dog crushing and snorting pills in the bathroom. Like daughter. My daughter crushed the candy. Who told you how to do that? Daddy. I would never teach that to a child. Is his wife real? We've never met. You sent her $100,000. For a Nigerian love scam. I know some things about Kelly you don't know. Her parents, they do not exist. It all happens. What if this is a changing day in your life? This February. So when she comes out of rehab and starts drinking, where does she get it? Me on Dr. Phil. You have no idea how much I want to slap you right now. daughter again this seed of deception has come from somewhere jason is nasty and evil spirit and he learned that from best his mom and dad i wouldn't treat my springer spaniel in the manner they have treated us i want to wrap up history 101 and talk about <laughs> where we go from here because i i we're running out of time and i, I it's really important for me to to say this Relationships are negotiated, and that negotiation window never closes. I mean, it really, it's a, there, there's a formula for success in a relationship, and the formula is this. It, it's a function of how well it meets the needs of the two parties involved. And in order to be successful, you need to learn what her needs are and make it your life's mission to meet them. Yes. Okay? <laughs> And you need to learn what his needs are and make it your life's mission to meet them. Okay. Okay? Thank you. Marriage is, marriage is not 50-50. I hate all of these self-appointed motivational speakers and all that get out there and talk about marriage is 50-50. It's not 50-50. Marriage is 100-100. Yeah. Everybody has to be all in all the time. It's, 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 a, it's 100, 100. And it is a learned skill set. And I'll bet neither one of you did everything you needed to do to get ready to get married before you got married. I agree. And one of the things I want you to do now, 10 years into the mission, is to go through some premarital counseling. Thank you. Okay. 10 years into the mission. Okay. 10 years into the mission. I want you to sit down and talk about all the things that are topics in a marriage. Everything from uh, parenting philosophy and religion and sexual expectations and the vision of labor and finances and future planning and all of those things that go into a marriage. And I, I want you to negotiate till you come up with a plan that both of you can be really excited about. Okay. And you, you 
have a particular important role here because if you're going to be a teacher, a leader, a provider, and a protector, the things that are important for the role of the man in the family, then you need to hold yourself to a particularly high standard. Yes. A particularly high standard. And if you wake up every day and ask yourself a simple question, what can I do today to make my wife's life better? You'll be amazed how things can begin to change. And I want to bring, I, I want to bring some help to you two, some professional help to you two. Thank you. In terms of some relationship counseling to sit down and help broker this for you. So you have a plan. I don't think you're in particular trouble here. But I do think that if, you know, do, let's do some preventative work here. Let's sure. do some planning for the future. Let's do some things where you really do have a plan. Okay. And then, then you have to make a decision uh, as to who you let into your world and into your life. And if, if they want to focus on how you got into this marriage and what has happened in the past, and, and if that's toxic for your relationship, then you have to put up some barriers. If they say, you know what, we're gonna come in this with an open mind and have an appreciation for there being a new day here, uh, you're not perfect. Has he made some bad choices and bad mistakes? Yes. Have you made some bad choices and bad mistakes? Absolutely. Yes. You've been unfair. You can't run and cry on your mother's shoulder in the bad times and then expect her to forget about all of that when you're I when know. you feel better the next day. That's not fair to your mother to I do that. Agree. It's not fair to your father to do that. And I'm sorry. So you 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 really need to mature beyond that. I will. But extended family is very important. These children having relationship with all four of their grandparents yeah. is very yeah. important. Yeah. Both of you should advocate for your children, but you do that only by being realistic and holding them to the highest standards of being the best person they can be, the best mother, the best wife, the best husband they can be. And you do that best by example rather than by by, by preaching and, and words. So I'm gonna see if I can bring you that help. Fair Thank enough? Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next, just when you thought you had heard it all, another mother-in-law accused of meddling. But this time, Grandma is meddling with more than a marriage. I've taken care of Felicia. Felicia's 26, almost 27, and I've always been there for her. I didn't think I should have to take care of her for the rest of her life. Nobody's taking care of me. From Xfinity. Bobby and Felicia are newlyweds, but their marriage is already being put to the test because of Felicia's mom, Randy, who they say is a lying, controlling, interfering drama queen. So you would think this young couple would just keep their distance from such a meddling mother-in-law, right? Well, wrong. As of now, they are all a little too close for comfort. Take a look. My mom and I have a toxic relationship. I don't want to live in the same house as her. I can barely stand going to dinner with her. I can get much more sleep tonight. The sound of her voice sometimes just gets under my skin and just makes me want to, like, cringe. She's like a child. Lays around the house all day, does absolutely nothing, doesn't pick up after herself. My mom is very nosy. She gets in my marriage a lot, tries to ask me if I get in an argument with my husband, what was the argument about, what pissed him off. I called her lazy, slob, worthless, and useless. You won't get much sleep tonight <laughs> because you like to stay up late. I have a daughter. Brooklyn has special needs. I've had problems with my mom with taking care of my daughter. When Granny does watch Brooklyn, she's lazy with her, and I can't stand it. My mom does things like forget to feed my daughter. If things don't change, she would have no contact with Brooklyn or Felicia. My mom needs to stay out of my marriage. She needs to get her own life and just stop meddling in my... Well... The mom says, no, that's not the entire story. Her name is Randy, and she says her daughter is disrespectful, ungrateful, and needs an attitude adjustment. Take a look. Felicia is very disrespectful. She'll say things to me like, I don't care if you go jump off that bridge. She'll say, you're a low life, you're a piece of dirt. Go back to the hole you crawled through. 
Bobby and Felicia getting up on me. Bobby and I used to get along since he is influenced a lot by Felicia. I have seen a different side of him. Bobby can be nasty like Felicia. He'll start cussing or he'll start yelling. He has never hurt me physically. He has broken my phone. Bobby and Felicia don't think about anybody but Bobby and Felicia. You could say they're selfish. Felicia has the attitude of things are her way or the highway. All Felicia ever cares about is money. As long as I can buy her the things that she wants, she's happy. But if I don't have the money, she's pissed off. She's right back to the old Felicia and just being a real bitch. I find it very hard to believe that the marriage will last for any length of time. I can't see anybody putting up with Felicia. Okay, now, you say she is unbelievably disrespectful, right? Yes. You say she is meddling and disrespectful and hurtful and all of these bad things, right? Yes. So... Why are you in each other's lives so much? Because I, I've always had a theory, you can call me a bitch, but you're gonna do it long distance. <laughs> I mean, if, if you don't like me, I, adios. I can't afford to be on my own right now. Well, then you ought to get the chip off your shoulder and quit being such an insolent child. If you need her to survive, are you, y'all are married? Yes. And, and you can't provide for each other? You, 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 do you have a job? Yes. you have a job? No. You need to get a job. No, I'm sure I could, but I have to be there with my child. Well, but she takes care of your child. No, she does not take care well, of my child. Well, you said she does sometimes. You said, uh, there are a couple of things you said here, just so we get this on the table. Okay. Um, you admit that you told your mother, I want you to die in a car accident, and at your funeral, I will laugh. Yes. I was mad. You told her you hated her, and you said, I don't feel bad because it's the truth. Right? You hate your mother. I do. She says you're a druggy bitch and tells you to Yeah, she does say all those things. Uh-huh. She's hit you and broken your glasses. Yes. Um, On my birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Why are you not saying, this is crazy, we gotta get out of this? I'm, <laughs> I've tried. It's just, it's really hard. I've tried to save up all the money that we can to, to get out. I don't like the situation that I'm in right now. Living with her and and dealing with the special needs, not dealing, taking care of a uh, special needs child of mine. But you say she helps take care of the special needs child, but she doesn't even do that very well. No, she doesn't. Says she forgets to feed her. She forgets to feed doesn't her. Doesn't clean her feeding tube. Yep. Sometimes. Which makes her s subject to infection. I mean, this could get serious in a fast hurry, right? Yes. It could be life-threatening. Yes. Yes. Ooh. How do you forget to feed a special needs child? Have you forgotten? It wasn't intentional. D despite the fact that she's disrespectful and abusive to you, yeah. language-wise and all, y y do you help her financially and pay her bills? And yes. Cell phone bills and yes. car insurance and all that? Why, why do you do that? Well, my father was actually paying the bills. Um, and he just passed away. And so now that he's gone, the bills will all come to me. But I've been wanting to sit down and talk to them to see about getting some help with paying the household bills because I'm supporting two households and I don't work. But you do have a side business, right? No, I don't. I collect uh, Social Security disability. Okay, Social Security. All right, well, coming up, there's something else going on with this family that needs to stop, in my opinion, uh, today. I think it's probably too late for that, but we'll talk about that. I said there's something going on here that's on the short list of the most incredible things that I believe I've encountered.
and you're going to find out what that is after the break. It's not me out there getting high on drugs and doing stupid things. For as long as I can remember she's been using, I don't know what she's like sober. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. Your sister is a sugar baby. She's kept a secret from her family. Rich men buying me stuff. Is that what you really want for your life? Do you object to this? I'll definitely object to this. That's tomorrow. Servefirst.com. My mom tried to control every aspect of my wedding. She had something to say about every single thing. I wish that she would have just let me do it the way I wanted to and maybe given an opinion here and there, not try to tell me how I should do it. She told a wedding planner that she wanted to walk down the aisle with her husband, and she got upset that Lisa's father, own father, was walking her down the aisle. Miranda wanted it her way. And I'm like, don't let her do that, man. She already had three weddings. She's good. This is your wedding. Well, Randy says her daughter Felicia and son-in-law Bobby are selfish, disrespectful, and constantly ganging up on her. Now, Felicia and Bobby say they have a very good reason for doing so. They say not only is Randy meddling in their marriage, she is actually putting their special needs daughter at risk. Take a look. My mom has a prescription for Oxy and Norco. It takes less than what she's prescribed, and she sells what she doesn't take. I have, I guess you could say, a side business. It doesn't hurt anybody. It's not me out there getting high on drugs and doing stupid things. For as long as I can remember she's been using, I don't know what she's like sober. She's loopy every time she takes them. When you're dozing off at a red light, that means she's taking more than one. My mom zones out in public. She doesn't know what's going on around her. I know that Bobby and Felicia feel that it affects them and it affects Brooklyn, but none of them have anything to do with it. Brooklyn is just a small child and it's not hurting her in any way. There have been times that my mom's done a deal at my house when she's supposed to be watching my daughter. That means there were strange people coming in and out of the house. She wasn't paying attention in Brooklyn. I don't know what she was doing. The way she sees it as, oh, Brooklyn doesn't understand. Brooklyn doesn't know. I'm like, that still doesn't make it right. Maybe if she goes to jail, it'll teach her not to do it. It's in my past. I don't do it anymore. I, I and... ask you, before the break, I said, you don't have a job, but you have a little side business. And you said, no. And then on the tape, you said, I guess I have, you'd call it a side business. <laughs> I'm selling narcotics. I was, I'm not anymore. And it's not affecting anybody. You still do it. Well, so you're a dealer? Not anymore, I'm not. Yes, you, you still are. She's a dealer? Yeah. I, I, yes. I keep telling her all the time she's a petty drug dealer. Petty schmetty, she's a dealer. You're, you're dealing drugs. Was. It's not was, you still are. Do you know what the statute of limitations is? There isn't one. Correct. But she likes me having the money because that means that I have money to give to her. Mm -hmm. That's present tense, by the way. Excuse me. <laughs> she liked me having all the extra money. Too late. But I don't have, I don't have it anymore. I don't, I don't, I, I had my doctor change my prescription. You guys have a special needs child. Yes. It's being cared for part-time by a woman that you say is taking drugs to the point that she just passes out sometimes? When I get tired, I can sleep anywhere doing anything. <laughs> and I don't take a lot of medication because of that. The medi well, you sell it all. Not anymore, I don't. <laughs> 
Well, they say get, you're still selling it. Well, they think I've got my pers my prescription changed, so I only get what I <laughs> use. I don't have any extra anymore. Here's the thing. You say that there's times when the child's forgetting to be fed, that the feeding tube is not being uh, cleaned properly, that your mother is selling drugs, sometimes in the presence of the child, which means that drug users are coming where the child is being kept, right? Yeah. Drug users. Now, let me tell you about the California Penal Code about that. It is considered neglect and abuse if anyone puts a child in harm's way, allows a child to be put in harm's way. That is a danger to the child, and I am a mandated reporter. Yeah. It means I am compelled by law to report that. Report away, I don't care. <laughs> and not <clears throat> not from my child. I try to stop it, but I'm yeah. living in their well, house. What I'm telling and you is you anything. need to stop this. watched as we put bullies I told you. and the victims of bullies when she would hit me in my head hit the locker all together in the same house friday i want to go i want to go home it's the parents in the hot seat is she having sex with a 47 year old i hope not you're her mother the drama continues please stop which moms are giving in? I want to go home. My daughter's upset. And which ones? You know this is the one thing I didn't want. Are taking a stand. I told you I'll be good. Don't do If you are going to be in the Los Angeles area and you would like free tickets, go to drphil.com and click on Be in the Audience. Or you can call 323-461-PHIL. Let me say to the two of you, you have a child yes. that means the world to you. Yes. yes. You have that child in a precarious situation. You need to rectify that, and you need to do that immediately. Because I'm telling you, if what you're saying is true. It's true. And this woman is dealing drugs, then that is the commission of a felony. Nobody's getting hurt. I understand that, and that's but, why but I don't you apparently do it. didn't understand that. Okay, you, you apparently didn't understand that, and maybe I'm putting a a sharper point on that now. So I understand, you, I do. So you will understand that, because I'm I'm telling you that I'm not even concerned about fixing this combative mother daughter relationship here. I'm concerned about the fact that this child is being put in a situation, and I am asking that you look me in the eye and tell me you're gonna rectify that right now. I'm gonna do what I can. Of course. No. Yes. No. <laughs> you're gonna do what you can, whether that's a little or a lot? No, I mean, I'm gonna do what I can to protect my child. All right. I'm. I'm unconvinced with your resolve um, by what you're saying, and uh, I, I made you the offer, and I heard your response, and I hear it loud and clear, and I will conduct myself accordingly. Um, we'll be right back. Thank you very much. that you won't find anywhere else. Plus, on drkill.com, you can see sneak previews of upcoming shows. Log on today. All right, we are out of time. I cannot stress enough that a parent must be a fiduciary for their child, even if it means breaking ties with a loved one. I want to thank all of my guests today for more information on how to set boundaries with your parents or in-laws. Log on to DrPhil.com and don't forget to tell what you thought about today's show on our message board. Thanks for being here. So long.
through some premarital counseling. Thank you. Okay. Ten years into the mission. <laughs> ten years into the mission. I want you to sit down and talk about all the things that are topics in a marriage. Everything from uh, parenting philosophy and religion and sexual expectations and the vision of labor and finances and future planning and all of those things that go into a marriage. And I want you to negotiate till you come up with a plan that both of you can be really excited about. Okay. And you, you have a particular important role here. Because if you're going to be a teacher, a leader, a provider, and a protector, the things that are important for the role of the man in the family, then you need to hold yourself to a particularly high standard. Yes. A particularly high standard. And if you wake up every day and ask yourself a simple question, what can I do today to make my wife's life better? You'll be amazed how things can begin to change. And I want to bring, I, I want to bring some help to you two, some professional help to you two. Thank you. In terms of some relationship counseling to sit down and help broker this for you. So you have a plan. I don't think you're in particular trouble here, but I do think that if, you know, do, let's do some preventative work here. Let's sure. do some planning for the future. What in the world is that about? Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. I hate to see people suffering, and you've hurt long enough. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Full second. Take I'm going to get you the help that you need. In five, four, This is going to be a changing day in your life. Go, Dr. Phil. Yesterday, we met Sarah, who says for the past decade, she's been in a tug of war with her pastor husband and her controlling parents. Now, her parents say Jason is abusive and Sarah needs to leave him and come home. Jason says he may not be perfect, but his in-laws are impossible. Here's what happened yesterday. My parents hate Jason. My parents are controlling. It's their way or the highway. I'm a pastor and I have my own church. I feel like I need to protect Sarah from her mom and dad. It's been a heartache from the moment he's come into our life. Sarah wasn't given to him. He took her. Jason is very controlling. He bullies her and it's not right. No woman should ever be afraid in her own home. You want this marriage shut down. We don't want to just said it on the film. Right, piece. but I said but you I don't. don't have a problem with but it. I said no. that's not what I said. I said I don't hate anyone. Well, here's what you said to us. This is a quote. I wrote this down. You said, including Jason's parents in the show, is like giving a child molester support. Yeah. That's how I feel. What in the world? is that about what i said to my husband in private was you're an abuser and of course now look at here you got two against four right this is the way it's always been and the thing of it is you can't even look me in the eye yeah. because you're because sending glares i sure hope I that they're getting it you on the, are on these cameras. an abusive man no, no don't no. say no jason no, no. we've seen it with our <laughs> own eyes and i i said that you are an abusive man so of course you've got to have your mama and your daddy right next to you i didn't There's invite two. them i did no, I, we, I said to the producer they said you didn't want him here i said this is my show not yours okay. i personally asked thank you for being here yeah. I, I wanted you here thank you for being here um, I think her parents, well. her parents are here. His parents were entitled to be here. I asked them here. I wanted them here. And I thank you for coming. Yeah. D Doug, what did you want to say? Uh, well, she, she's made these comments. In harm's way. That is a danger to the child. And I am a mandated reporter. Yeah. It means I am compelled by law to report that. Report away. I don't care. <laughs> And not, <clears throat> not from my child. I try to stop it, but I'm yeah. living in their well, household. What I'm telling and you is, you anything. need to stop this.
Fans watched as we put bullies I told you. and the victims of bullies when she would hit me in my head, hit the locker. All together in the same house. Friday. I want to go! I want to go home! It's the parents in the hot seat. Is she having sex with a 47-year-old? I hope not. You're her mother. The drama continues. Please stop! Which moms are giving in? I want to go home. My daughter's upset. And which ones? You know this is the one thing I didn't want. Are taking a stand. I told you I'll be good. Don't do it. If you are going to be in the Los Angeles area and you would like free tickets, go to drphil.com and click on Be in the Audience. Or you can call 323-461-PHIL. Let me say to the two of you, be 50 on that. Let's get down to what we're going to do here in this situation. Okay. Um, you don't like her talking to her parents because they try to poison her in your mind about your marriage. No, I want her having a relationship with her parents. Yeah. But I don't want to deal with the fact that she ca always comes back with me or the reality is they're abusive to her on the phone. Yes. I mean, they have yelled and screamed at her on the phone time and time and time again. And she cries in my shoulder. She's cried in my parents' shoulder. I, cried on Dad's I mean, shoulder. it is absolutely unbelievable. Dad's it is here. ridiculous. I mean, ridiculous. Do you feel abused by your parents? Yes, I do. I do feel abused. I have felt abused on both sides. Uh -huh. And I contacted you because I wanted some peace to be brought to this situation. I wanted peace to be brought between my parents and Jason. I wanted peace brought between my parents and myself, between Jason and myself, and between all of us as a whole. My dream for this situation would be that one day I could invite every side for a holiday or for a birthday party or for a graduation. And at this point... I can't do it without getting some form of grief. The wound, the cut has been so deep. Likewise. And, yeah, yeah. Um, the cut has been so deep, we would need time to heal. Dr. Phil, can I, can I, uh, we want to have children anyway? No, absolutely. She allows herself to be abused, so. No, I don't. Do you do two not. spank your children? Yes. Yes, we do spank our children uh -huh. in discipline only. Uh-huh. And, uh, and by the way, I'm, I'm not a big fan of spanking. Uh, the country is divided about 50-50 on that. Let's get down to what we're going to do here in this situation. Okay. Um, you don't like her talking to her parents because they try to poison her in your mind about your marriage. No, I want her having a relationship with her parents. Yeah. But I don't want to deal with the fact that she ca always comes back with me or the reality is they're abusive to her on the phone. Yes. I mean, they have yelled and screamed at her on the phone time and time and time again. And she cries in my shoulder. She's cried in my parents' shoulder. I, cried on Dad's I mean, shoulder. it is absolutely unbelievable. Dad's it is here. ridiculous. I mean, ridiculous. Do you feel abused by your parents? Yes, I do. I do feel abused. I have felt abused on both sides. Uh -huh. And I contacted you because I wanted some peace to be brought to this situation. I wanted peace to be brought between my parents and Jason. I wanted peace brought between my parents and myself, between Jason and myself, and between all of us as a whole. My dream for this situation would be that one day I could invite every side for a holiday or for a birthday party or for a graduation. And at this point, I can't do it without getting some form of... Oh. You want this marriage shut down. We don't want our daughter to live in an abusive, controlling, manipulative relationship. So you don't necessarily want her to get a divorce? No, we have tried not to put our nose in their marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Laugh all you want. Yeah. I believe a wife who is the weaker vessel leaning on her husband, who's supposed to be stronger, that's just the way God made us. I've been taught that I need to submit. Submitting means hubby is always right. I am tired of being controlled. You're a pastor, right? Yes. So are you a Bible scholar? I believe the Bible says that husbands are to love their wives as Christ loved the church, and the Bible says that wives are to be submissive to their husbands. 
you love your wife as Christ loved the church. Right. I don't think Christ was verbally abusive I with agree. the church. I, I don't agree. think Christ stomped around and slammed into the walls right. and taunted his yes, wife with control. That's not loving your wife as right. Christ loved the church. And the submission followed from the love. Why I act that way, I don't know, Dr. Phil. But, but I know but that but I let's should. not wrap that up in the scripture and talk about it as <laughs> though it's some kind of ordained role of the right. man in the family, because it certainly is not. And I'll debate that with you as long as you want to do it. No, I won't debate that. Do you call your mother and complain about your husband? Yes, I have. And I know that that's where part of the issue is, is because I have complained to my mom. I feel for as long as I can remember she's been using, I don't know what she's like sober. on an all-new Dr. Phil. Your sister is a sugar baby. She's kept a secret from her family. Rich men buying me stuff. Is that what you really want for your life? Do you object to this? I'll definitely object to this. That's tomorrow. Servefirst.com. My mom tried to control every aspect of my wedding. She had something to say about every single thing. I wish that she would have just let me do it the way I wanted to and maybe given an opinion here and there, not try to tell me how I should do it. She told a wedding planner that she wanted to walk down the aisle with her husband, and she got upset that Lisa's father, own father, was walking her down the aisle. Randy wanted it her way. And I'm like, don't let her do that, man. She already had three weddings. She's good. This is your wedding. Well, Randy says her daughter Felicia and son-in-law Bobby are selfish, disrespectful, and constantly ganging up on her. Now, Felicia and Bobby say they have a very good reason for doing so. They say not only is Randy meddling in their marriage, she is actually putting their special needs daughter at risk. Take a look. My mom has a prescription for Oxy and Norco. It takes less than what she's prescribed, and she sells what she doesn't take. Sometimes in the presence of the child, which means that drug users are coming where the child is being kept, right? Yeah. Drug users. Now, let me tell you about the California Penal Code about that. It is considered neglect and abuse if anyone puts a child in harm's way, allows a child to be put in harm's way, that is a danger to the child, and I am a mandated reporter. Yeah. It means I am compelled by law to report that. Report away, I don't care. <laughs> and not, <clears throat> not from my child. I try to stop it. But I'm yeah. living in their well, household. What I'm telling and I you is, you anything. need to stop this. Millions watched as we put bullies. I told you. And the victims of bullies. When she would hit me in my head, hit the locker. All together in the same house. Friday. I want to go. I want to go. It's the parents in the hot seat. Is she having sex with a 47-year-old? I hope not. You're her mother. The drama continues. Please stop. D despite the fact that she's disrespectful and abusive to you, yeah. language-wise and all, do you help her financially and pay her bills? And yes. Cell phone bills and yes. car insurance and all that? Why, why do you do that? Well, my father was actually paying the bills. Um, he just passed away. And so now that he's gone, the bills will all come to me. But I've been wanting to sit down and talk to them to see about getting some help with paying the household bills because I'm supporting two households and I don't work. But you do have a side business, right? No, I don't. I collect uh, social security disability. Okay, Social Security. All right, well, coming up, there's something else going on with this family that needs to stop, in my opinion, uh, today. I think it's probably too late for that, but we'll talk about that. I said there's something going on here that's on the short list of the most incredible things that I believe I've encountered. And you're going to find out what that is after the break.
not me out there getting high on drugs and doing stupid things. For as long as I can remember she's been using, I don't know what she's like sober. Or sleep tonight. The sound of her voice sometimes just gets under my skin and just makes me want to, like, cringe. She's like a child. Lays around the house all day, does absolutely nothing, doesn't pick up after herself. My mom is very nosy. She gets in my marriage a lot, tries to ask me if I get in an argument with my husband, what was the argument about, what pissed him off. I called her lazy, slob, worthless, and useless. You won't get much sleep tonight <laughs> because you like to stay up late. I have a daughter. Brooklyn has special needs. I've had problems with my mom with taking care of my daughter. When Rainy does watch Brooklyn, she's lazy with her, and I can't stand it. My mom does things like forget to feed my daughter. If things don't change, she would have no contact with Brooklyn or Felicia. My mom needs to stay out of my marriage. She needs to get her own life and just stop meddling in my... Well, the mom says, no, that's not the entire story. Her name is Randy. And she says her daughter is disrespectful, ungrateful, and needs an attitude adjustment. Take a look. Felicia is very disrespectful. She'll say things to me like, I don't care if you go jump off that bridge. She'll say, you're a low life, you're a piece of dirt. Go back to the hole you crawled through. Bobby and Felicia gang up on me. Bobby and I used to get along since he 